It's very dark. <laughs> I'm in my car. It's almost 10 o'clock at night, and I'm driving. So the only light that I have available to me is the reflected light in my rearview mirror from the cars behind me, and the occasional overhead light that I pass underneath as I drive along. I was thinking about uh, some of the comments that I've gotten on some of my uh, previous video posts. On a separate note, um, I want to thank everybody that's added me. I know that I say this every time, but you guys, you guys don't understand that I went from, in one and a half days, I went from 13, and then, you know, I made that video, and I had 22, which was mind-boggling, to, like, 60-something, and now I'm up to 70-something. I don't have the capacity to, uh to be able to recall every single name on that list and just be sure that you recognize that I recognize you and I'm grateful. So I just wanted to get that out of the way and, and make sure that you guys know that I am i don't know how to respond. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. You all have been so kind and I just, I don't know what to do. But on to the thought process. Um, the comments that some of you guys have left for me um, commenting about how, you know, you thought that I was, I was funny. Um, I, I had something I said, I believe I might have said it in a video, or I think I might have uh, wrote, written it down. Uh, my approach to the idea of what is funny and what funny means. Where I see funny is um, to be funny or to think of yourself as funny. To me, is sort of a selfish thing because someone who thinks of themselves as funny is... It's an ego thing, you know, when you, it's not about the ability to make people laugh, it is about the, per the perception of being able to make people laugh. To care about the fact that people are laughing rather than, or to care more about the fact that you are making people laugh than people are laughing. That's what I mean. But, I wanted to touch on that because my entire life, I've always wanted to be able to give people the gift of laughter. I've always wanted to, to make them laugh, you know, when I was younger. And I, I tried desperately, you know. It's one of those things where, you know, and anybody who has any sort of knack or, or concept of, 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 of an effect, you know that there is no such thing as, as um, well, you know that, uh, that there's such thing as trying too hard, you know. When you want to do something, rather than, you know, I mean, obviously the process of practice is trying, but when you try to do something too hard, it's not genuine, you know. People know that, people know that you're trying, that takes away from whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. And I'm not talking about trying too hard like, you want to be the best basketball player, or want to be the best, you know, guitar player. I'm talking about like, you know, when you're trying to fit in, or you're trying to be cool, or whatever. You try too hard, people see that you're trying, and not that you're just being. Well, all my life, you know, making people laugh, or, or being the reason that people laugh, was very important. Because I was making them laugh. I've had a very, very difficult life. And I, I am very intimate with pain. I'm very intimate with, with, with being hurt, and disappointment, and, and all kinds of different stuff that I'm not really going to go into. But I don't like how that made me feel. And I never wanted to be the source of that for another person. I know that there were times in my life where I was because of the kind of mindset that I was in. You know, the angry young man. I'm angry against the world. The world is against me. I hate everything. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm, I've, be, I've moved beyond that to an extent, I'd like to think. But um, I'm getting off track with what I was thinking here. Anyway, the point being that... Uh, all, you know, I can remember uh, always wanting to make people laugh, and it brought back a thought of something that I had done many, many years ago, and I wanted to share this little, this little uh, anecdote with y'all. So, I was about six years old, and going to a place in Philadelphia called the South Philadelphia Community Center. Basically what it was, was it was a, um, it was a, a building where, uh, you know, latchkey kids could go while their parents were at work. And since I was raised by a single mother, because my father had left when I was eight, um, she worked three jobs to keep us in a little crappy apartment, keep food on the table, keep me going to school, that kind of thing. So I was home alone a lot. 
and my mother didn't feel comfortable with me being home alone because, you know, as a, as a concerned parent, she wants to make sure that I'm being watched and taken care of and not getting in any trouble. So she would send me to this place called the South Philadelphia Community Center, which was located on Broad Street, for those of you that are actually been to South Philly. Um, and that's, that's where I got first introduced to acting. I was originally, I was an actor. Um, I haven't pursued acting in a long, long time because I've gotten disgusted with Hollywood. And my experience with theater actors is not very pretty. Theater actors tend to also be musical actors, and don't even get me started on the difference between an actor and a musical actor. Let's just say that um, if you were to take away a musical actor's ego, you'd probably be left with a pair of shoes. Anyway, uh, so I was, I went there and I was, I was, you know, working on being an actor. And the reason why I got started on acting actually was because of the fact that I was the only kid in the, in the, um, in this particular group that could memorize the lines. They were doing a Christmas play. I forget. It was like the, the, the Santa's big day. I don't remember what it was called. But um, because I could remember the lines, I earned the role of the, uh, the uh, what was it, the captain of the toy soldiers. That was my first role. And that's a completely different story altogether about what happened with that. But it was very traumatizing to me because uh, perception-wise, it was a bad time. I, I may bring it up later, I may not. Anyway, the point being is that I got my start, start into, uh, into uh, performance, being on stage in front of people. And I liked it. <laughs> so, one year, and I, let me just once again remind you all that I was six years old. One year, they had a, uh, and then one year, so I guess, you know, some time there. I, I say one year because it's a time reference. Um, they had a talent show. They were having a talent show. I was about six or seven, yeah, that's right. And um, so I decided I was going to be a stand-up comic. I had a joke book at home that I had gotten from a, a library I used because the libraries around there used to sell their used books. And I got an, an old, you know, uh, 1001 kids jokes. You know, like, what's yellow and goes click, click, a ballpoint banana, things like that, yeah. So I, I was going to get up on stage and tell all of these jokes that I knew to the audience. And I had a good 40 or 50 of these things memorized, man. I can only remember a few now. One of them being the ballpoint banana joke. But, uh, <laughs> but, um, so I, I got up on this stage, right? I've been working and rehearsing on this. And during the rehearsals, they would watch what you did. And, you know, you, you put on, show them what you were going to do. And I did my little jokes and whatnot. Then came time for the actual show itself. And, uh, I was ready. I was, re I was ready for, uh, for the prime time, man. I was, this exercise in, in, uh, in practice was going to pay off. I was going to knock them dead. <laughs> so I got up there and I started in on my jokes. And I'm telling every joke I know. Then, and, and, and then I turn to the audience and I say the, the following. And I want you to remember, once again, I was seven years old at the time when I did this. I turned to the audience and I said, hey, everybody, I hope you're all having a good time today. Is everybody having a good time? And they were like, yeah, you know, I'm a kid on stage. They're being nice. So everybody, you know, the you guys are having fun. Everybody's having fun. Yeah. And I said, okay. So how many people you out there, how many people of you out there are Irish? And they said, and a bunch of people, yeah, we're Irish. And I said, isn't it great to be Irish? I mean, isn't it wonderful? It's just absolutely fabulous to be Irish. And they all, you know, their people say, yeah. And I said, I wouldn't know, I'm Italian. <laughs> Needless to say, I got pulled off the stage. Like, two of the counselors jumped up onto the stage and pulled me off the stage. So, I think that was my Lenny Bruce moment for, for someone so young. <laughs> And needless to say, my uh, my sense of humor has not gotten any more um, acceptable since then. So there you go, a little look into my in my life and the history of the kind of person that I am, seen through the eyes of uh, of somebody whose face you can't really see due to the, um, bad traffic uh, conditions. So that's it. There you go.